Goat Islands act as a natural hurricane barrier for Old Harbour? We took a closer look at the impending development of the Goat Islands and the impact that that would have on the environment. Check it out. On September 14, the Jamaica Environmental Trust organized a flotilla, now being dubbed Goatilla, for interested persons to tour the Goat Islands. This trip introduced persons from the community to environmentalists who want to ensure that the Portland Bight area remains a protected area with a development that intrudes as little as possible on the natural state of the environment. It was believed that the Goat Islands was the last home of the iguanas, so when a few were taken to the zoo in the hopes of mating and they all died, they were put on the extinct list. The topography of the Great Goat Island is similar to that of Helcha and it is believed to have been a part of mainland Jamaica. The islands are surrounded by mangroves and as the mangroves grow out, they will weave a pathway through the bay and perhaps the Goat Islands will once again be connected to the mainland. But with the plans for Goat Island, this natural progression will not happen. The China Harbor Engineering Company that has been at the helm of a lot of the construction that has happened on the island has asked the government for the use of the Goat Islands for development into a transshipment hub. Of course, they will pay handsomely for this use and with a country that is in the red, the Prime Minister and other interested parties will consider any and all reasonable offers. But is this a reasonable offer? Mr. Speaker, when development is proposed in or near to rich environmental areas, it is expected that concerns will be raised. However, given the present state of the pro process, some of the statements that have been made and the resulting position taken are premature. Still, Mr. Speaker, this administration accepts such public discourse as a healthy part of how we as a nation move forward on important issues. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, this administration is very aware of the need to protect the environment to the greatest extent possible. However, our definition of the environment involves human beings. And so, and so even as we are concerned about the flora and fauna of the natural habitat, we are also concerned about the socio-economic advancement of the human population. Within that context, we feel that every reasonable Jamaican would accept that this proposed investment of approximately 1,500 million US dollars if approval if approved would represent a key development milestone and would have a significant positive impact on the country's development agenda the goat islands are a part of the portland bight wetlands and keys in 2006 this area was designated as a wetland of national importance under the convention on wetlands also known as the ramsar convention in a document produced by the National Environment Planning Agency, wetlands are described as areas of marsh, fen, peatland or water, whether natural or artificial, permanent or temporary, with water that is static, flowing, fresh, brackish or salt, including areas of marine water, the depth at which at low tide does not exceed 6 meters. Wetlands are important because they filter the water that passes by, removing excess nutrients, heavy metals, pollutants, and harmful bacteria. Wetlands have many other functions, such as water storage, nutrient cycling, groundwater recharge and discharge, and crucial to the Old Harbor Bay area, wetlands provide shoreline protection and storm protection. The Goat Islands act as a barrier for the people of Old Harbor during storms and hurricanes. So preserving wetlands in general, and the Portland Bight specifically, is necessary. Preservation of wetlands doesn't necessarily mean no development of wetlands. However, as a member of the Ramsar Convention, the government must be committed to the promotion of conservation, that is, the wise use of wetlands.
Protected areas don't exclude development. As you can see, look around, there's lots of development in here. There's a power plant, there's Port Esquivel, you know, 50,000 people live in the area. So it's not that there's no, no development allowed, but it's that you should take extra care. So if you are going to consider development, you have to consider it in the context of the very valuable natural resources, which was why it was protected. And you have to consider the livelihoods that people are earning. I mean, a lot of people in Old Harbor live off fishing. So if you're going to completely change our fishing grounds, then I would say you have to approach that very, very carefully. Further, the draft policy and regulation for mangrove and coastal wetlands protection created in 1997 by Jamaica's Natural Resources Conservation Authority, aims to promote the management of coastal wetlands to ensure that the many benefits they provide are sustained. In addition, the document states that the aim will be brought about through five goals, one of which is bring to an end all activities carried on in wetlands which cause damage to these resources. So why even consider the possibility of destroying the goat islands when there are other more suitable sites available? We're not against a transshipment port, logistics hub, etc. This is not an argument against that. Port Esquivel, as we can see clearly, is just to our left here. Alcoa is just also to our left. They already receive the ships coming in for that purpose. So our government needs to tell us why Port Esquivel and the, the area going back inland is not an option. I think there are opportunities for recreation. Um, we had a, a fine morning and, up, and we saw two people in kayaks. So I think there are opportunities for recreation that have not been properly exploited. And we, and we sh yes, and we should do that, yes. It is one alternative. Obviously, it's not the same scale as what is being talked about, but it is more sustainable. And that is what we're supposed to be concerned with. The larger question, however, boils down to our integrity. As members of the United Nations and signees of the Ramsar Convention, we, that is our government and the citizens of Jamaica, have the responsibility to uphold the commitments that we have made. Our government should be coming to us and saying, there are six possible places in Jamaica. All right, we know already that the Fort Augusta area was the original place, okay, that the government had said to China Harbor, use there. China Harbor has now said, no man, we want more space. We want, ah, look, we see this nice piece of real estate. We want it. And our government is saying, because they come with deep pockets, and this is what they want, we have to give them. We do not have to. No self-respecting country functions with development that is determined and, and dictated by the investor. Every other country I know of has areas zoned for particular things, all right? Has national parks, and they do not just willy-nilly give up their national parks because some investor says this is where we want. So our government has an obligation, not just to us, it has an obligation to the generations to come. Their function, their purpose as a government is to act as our representative and our stewards. And so it's not theirs to just sign away. It puts the entire country's integrity in question. Because the, the, the question is, are we just for sale, sir? Anywhere and everywhere is just up, sir, for sale? Then you know, we know, I mean, then what we've done is that we've reduced the country essentially to a place of prostitution.